A performance organized by Senator Diane Rosenbaum's office. The Oregon Women's History Consortium will perform a reenactment in commemoration of the centennial of women's suffrage in Oregon and the efforts of those who led the women's suffrage campaign of 1912. Eliza Candy Jones is performing as Mrs. F.J. Bailey, anti-suffragist, and Janice Dilg as performing as Sarah A. Evans, pro-suffragist. Good morning, senators, staff members, and esteemed guests. I'm so pleased that you've invited us here to debate the important issue of women's suffrage this morning. As a member of the Oregon Equal Suffrage Association, I can assure you that Oregon women have done considerable work to make Oregon a safer and healthier community. But we need the vote to continue that work. We need the same power as men to make our cities, our towns, our entire state a better place. Good morning. I am the proud president of the Oregon State Association opposed to the extension of suffrage to women. Ours is the greatest nation on earth, and women have had their part in this great achievement. But women's most important work is in the home and not on the hustings. And her power for good is greater because she has been content to be a woman and use her sacred influence on men to achieve better things. She has not striven to be an imitation of men. Oregon men are actually in danger of being called mossbacks, but I am convinced and confident that they will join us in our effort this November 5th to extend the right of self-expression to women, which is really all that Vote for Women means. I don't think there is anyone who hasn't heard about the ballot measure with all the shouting you suffragists do. Haven't you already tried five times? Why, from what I know, many women simply do not want the vote. Anyone who believes that knows very little about most women. <laughs> Readers of the newspapers can see for themselves that where women have the right to vote, they use it in great numbers. Why, the men of Washington, California, and Idaho consider women equal partners. What's wrong with Oregon men? <laughs> There is nothing wrong with Oregon men. There are many here who understand what a travesty the women's vote would be, as I obviously do. It would surely taint a woman's morals for one thing. Reverend C.T. Wilson, for example, is an anti-suffragist and a prohibitionist, and he believes suffrage will only strengthen the immoral element of society. Does Mrs. Bailey really think it would pollute a woman more to drop a ballot into a box than to slave over a steaming tub washing her husband's dirty shirts? I am sure that it's time to stop thinking of this nonsense and deal with the real issues of woman suffrage. I ask this woman who advocates for woman suffrage, what precisely shall be done with the baby while its mother trots off to vote? On that question, I assure you, there is no problem. We will leave the baby exactly where we do when we go to the city and county treasurer's office to pay our taxes. <laughs> Let me point out that woman suffrage simply has not accomplished what its advocates claim for it, as evidenced by the laws and conditions in the current suffrage states. The main cry of the suffragists is that women need the ballot to better protect the wage-earning women and child. The wages of women simply have not been raised in the suffrage states, indeed, quite the contrary. Equal suffragists do not claim that we will cure every evil overnight. Time will be required. But social and political conditions have been changing over the last decades, and women's suffrage will help advance that cause. Why, if a woman can be Queen of England, Austria, or Russia, why not President of the United States? Oh, well, that is just absurd. I call this debate to an end. Thank you. On behalf of the Senate, we wish to thank Senator Rosenbaum and our performers Eliza Canty-Jones and Janice Dilg. 
Also, thank you, Senator Winders, for your invocation and Senator Telfer for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance.